Good morning, Salon Republic. Happy Monday. So it is just about 10 o'clock on the West Coast. I'm here in Los Angeles, California. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Stephanie Kashmir, and I'm the regional educator for L'Oreal Professional. A few of you may know me, and I am so thankful to be back here today and sharing some education with you guys, featuring a few of my favorite products and some really, really cool express balayage techniques that I think everybody can take away from. Um, personally, I work out of a suite in Salon Republic as well, and I know what it's like when we're trying to stay inspired and looking to stay on top of trends and new products, but we're in charge of our own business. So again, thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take you guys through balayage, utilizing a few products that L'Oreal Professional has came out with, which are new innovations. So with this mannequin that we're working with today, I'm actually going to prep her hair with metal detox. So we're going to begin with that prior to actually doing the balayage. Um, and one of the reasons that we will be prepping the hair with the metal detox is because as we know, Anytime we're working with lightening products, especially really accelerated products like we'll be using today, you want to make sure that we're really looking out for the integrity of the hair and making sure that we're providing strength and ensuring that we're going to get the lightness we're looking for, but we're not going to be compromising the actual hair. So with that being said, I'm actually going to be introducing you to a new lightener called Blonde Studio 9 which features a bonder inside. And we'll talk about that as we get into doing the hair. Um, but again, you can see that innovation and looking out for the integrity of the hair is really going to be the goal, as well as working a little bit smarter, not harder, and getting some quick express techniques in the hair. That way we can see more clients. So with this, I am going to go ahead and mix up our product before we get started. Let me just position the mannequin and make sure we've got good lighting. Perfect. Um, and you can see I've got quite a few tools here on my tray. So I think one of the things that's really important is making sure, especially when you're doing a balayage service, that we have everything we need laid out for us because it is a little bit different than traditionally coloring hair. We're not just hair painting. We're actually going to be working with perforated wrap, which I have here, as well as cotton. So the reason I'm going to be doing that is because, again, I'm using a product that contains a little bit of ammonia. We have a lot of lighteners that are ammonia free, but Blonde Studio 9 is going to be the most accelerated. So to make sure that I have the cleanest application with no marbleization um, and maximum lift, I'm going to use the perforated wrap for my heat conductor and my form of separating the hair. So with this, you can start in the front or the back, depending on what you're looking for. The way I'm going to actually wrap it with the perforated wrap is going to give you the option of either removing the front or the back separately if you feel that the hair has already processed. And again, with Blonde Studio 9 being the most accelerated lightener that we have, it's best to work with it in small batches. So if it takes you a little bit longer to get in your balayage placement, then you may end up rinsing the back and letting the front process a little bit longer until you get your desired lightness. So with that, we're going to go ahead and we'll start in the front today. But again, you can start in the back or the front, depending on what you're looking for. As we know, most clients look for a little bit more dimension around the front, so that's my reason for starting in the front. And again, you can alternate developers as well. So I'm going to start with the 30 volume. Again, I'm starting in the front wanting a little bit more brightness, so I'm probably going to end up rinsing at the same time, but I'm going to remix for the back with the same developer. So let's go ahead and get started. And as we're going through, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat box. I would love to answer any questions you may have. So again, with Blonde Studio 9, this is actually an oil-based lightener and developer. So it's working with its own specific developer, like I mentioned. And again, it's because it is completely oil-based. So it contains Olacare Complex, which is actually going to help um, lighten the hair at the same time of actually strengthening the hair and making sure that we're not 
changing the actual bond of the hair or damaging the actual hair due to the fact that we are lifting nine levels. So the Olicare complex is going to help to hydrate, especially hair that's got any formation to it or anybody who needs that maximum lift that's maybe a level five or darker. So it's a great option for them, as well as anybody who's a medium brown or light blonde looking to get a lot blonder. So the first thing we'll do with Metal Detox, and again, we're going to just spray it through the hair. This is going to be a pre-color treatment you can do with any color line. So it doesn't have to be L'Oreal Professional Color or Lightener. It can be any color brand out there. But this is the first step during consultation prior to doing any color service. And as you'll see, all I'm doing is misting it through the hair. So there's one spray over the top. I'm going to loosely section it into two sprays. That's my second section. Maybe three. And as as I'm spraying it, it's such a large amount. I'm kind of just dragging down my sprayer to make sure I've got the hair coated. And the goal with this, due to the innovation and the active ingredient, which is actually a very, very small molecule called glycamine, I'm not worried about saturating the hair because it's actually moving and attaching itself to the metals within the hair, which is going to provide me with 87% less breakage anytime I'm lightening and also true to tone deposit. So what we found after testing for over seven years is when color ends up undesired, it actually is results of the metals that have been deposited into the hair fiber for a variety of reasons. And you'll see over here in the front, I've just done about three sprays and we'll do the same thing off to the other side. So it should be with hair about this length, about 10 sprays and if they have really compromised ends make sure that we are getting the metal detox there but again we don't want to saturate the hair you want to make sure that we're just misting it through and it should just feel kind of like a light texture spray once it's dried into the hair and if it feels damp you've used a little too much product no harm done just make sure you blow dry it prior to doing your color that way it doesn't slow it down. So again, that's it for the metal detox application. I'm just applying it through the hair to reduce breakage and ensure desired color results prior to doing any color and it's compatible with every color brand on the market. Okay, so let's go ahead and section her off again. And I just did your traditional tea parting. Let's place back on, here we go. Um, so we're gonna go from ear to ear and just section out that hair. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just clip away the back as well. So even though I'm doing my tea parting and sectioning out the front, just to ensure I don't have any hair in my way and I can paint really clean pieces, I'm gonna go ahead and just section out the back like this and just clip it away with one clip. Just like that. And then again, we're going to start on the front of the head. And with this mannequin, we're going to work off of a center part. Again, if the client has a side part, we can work off of that. But make sure that prior to balayaging, since we are doing a French balayage, which will be a surface paint, we've discussed the way the client wears their hair. All right. So now that we've got our sectioned off, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up our product. Again, we'll be working with Blonde Studio 9, and this is brand new to market. It actually has Bonder inside. So rather than adding in an additive, um, it's actually put directly into my lightener and it doesn't take any extra time or any extra steps. So you can see I've prepped the hair with Metal Detox to reduce the breakage and to get true to tone color, but now I'm actually ensuring that the hair bond while the lightening process is happening is staying strong and providing me that nine levels of lift that I'm looking for. With Blonde Studio 9, you can mix it one to one or one to three, depending on what you're looking for. Because we're doing a balayage, I'm gonna do a one to one and a half mixing ratio. So utilizing, again, the Blonde Studio specific developer, which is oil-based, 30 volume. I'm going to go ahead and add in one and a half parts developer. So I did one scoop of our lightener, 
which I believe is 30 grams. And I'm doing one and a half to the developer. All right. The other thing I like a lot about this product is the fact that it's really easy to work with. So you'll notice as I'm mixing it up, there's not much of a dust cloud. The product itself is really, really creamy, really easy to lay down, and it is kind of a light blue in color lightener. And I've chosen this one out of the Blonde Studio portfolio, again, for maximum lift, but also because it has a bonder inside. So you can see the consistency I like to work with. It's kind of like a Greek yogurt. Um, it's not too liquefied. It's just a perfect consistency to load up onto my planchette. So with that being said, I'm gonna just move a few things over. Um, I mentioned I'm also going to be working with cotton, so I'm really going to be using this for separation. A lot of times I think colorists get carried away with cotton. This is really just for separation within the hair, so it's not necessary to have really huge pieces. We're really just using it for a little bit of padding, especially if we're going to use the perforated wrap as our heat conductor. So we want to make sure that if the client has really thick or coarse hair, we've provided the padding, and the same with fine hair, just to make sure we don't get anything on the underside. So I like to pre-tear mine in about one and a half inch pieces. Anything about that size works well. The other thing is I will always have a specific brush that I'm gonna use to load up my product. So I'm gonna remove my spatula and then this will be my well brush. So I'm gonna load up my planchette utilizing this brush specific. And then I'm gonna use a separate brush to actually apply the balayage when it comes to time to paint. So when I load up the planchette again, I'm gonna just use about the same width as the brush and paint it off to one side. Now you can load up the whole thing if that's what you're comfortable doing, um, or you can just do the one side. The reason for the one side is because if I ever wanted to pull pieces through, normally I'll pop them onto my planchette and I'll do that over to my clean side so I'm not picking up too much product. So again, that's how I would load it up. And let's get into sectioning. So again, I just went from ear to ear and now we are going to subsection within the section. So we're working off of a straight part. And what I'm gonna do is something that may you may have worked with before, but again, super, super effective, super quick. And it provides a lot of contrast within a balayage application. So it's nice to do for the first time. It's also nice if you're building dimension within balayage to do to a repeat client. So again, to show you the sectioning, it's just ear to ear. And I'm going to loosely go in here and I'm going to zigzag towards the hairline. And I'm just loosely zigzagging. And in that zigzag, it provides me with almost an upside down triangle but that actually was two zigzags, if you see, right here. And the reason I'm doing it that way is because I'm able to approach closer to the hairline with the first piece that I'm actually painting. So that's gonna be our first section. I'll go ahead and pull this pretty tight and clip it out of the way. Another thing I find pretty useful balayaging is keeping around a little metal alligator clip. So anytime you're working with hair that has formation or anytime we're working around the hairline, a lot of time we have those loose baby hairs and we wanna make sure that we push those away so they don't end up looking like breakage. And if we need to control anything a little bit more, this clip is always nice just to control those little hairs right above your sectioning. All right, so let's get a better angle. So we you can see what's going on here. Um, so like I mentioned, I have loaded up my planchette. This is a L'Oreal professional planchette, but whatever you're comfortable painting off of, feel free to do so. I feel more comfortable uh, being a balayage artist actually using the planchette in my hand and picking up the product from that. The other thing is I'm gonna keep a couple of different size brushes. So we have two really nice 
brushes that actually are almost similar to a makeup brush. They have um, kind of a soft feathered tip on the actual bristle. So it makes it a lot easier when you are trying to feather those soft lines in your balayage. So I have one that's small and then one that's a little bit larger. I use a smaller one a lot of times around the hairline. And then we also just did a partnership with Famar and this is one of the larger brushes. So anytime I'm working with coarse or curly hair, I'll typically use a larger brush to pick up more product. That way I'm able to lay it down simpler. But today with this mannequin, we're gonna actually just use um, the smaller one since I'm working with the hairline and then I'll probably switch to the larger size brush in the back of the head. All right. So that's gonna be our first section. And the goal of this balayage isn't gonna be like the traditional points if you've seen in any classes I've done before. We normally work within L'Oreal Professional in a single point or a double point or a triple point. With this technique, I'm gonna get a little bit more impact, but more of a lighter effect overall. And with that being said, we're gonna actually surface paint the whole section that we lay out. I think a lot of times people get nervous about doing so because you're applying so much product. But when we're just surface painting, it's just the surface of the hair. So it ends up being really beautiful once the hair is laying flat and straight or actually curled. So now I'm gonna pick up the product. And again, normally about the size I'm gonna lay down, I'll use or I'll pick up on my brush. So since we're going to be painting this whole surface, I'm gonna pick up a little bit more product than normal. I'm also gonna pull the tension really smooth here. And I'm gonna start painting about an inch down from the actual section I'm doing. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm softly feathering that product back up into the hairline. And what that's providing me with is a softer line of diffusion into the client's natural overall look. So this is going to give us a really natural finish. It's also going to provide her with a little bit more time in between appointments, but it's going to break up the hair and provide a lot of dimension again in a short amount of time. So the goal here is going to be really French balayage, which is surface painting. And that means that we're going to have a very clean underside with every piece that we lay down. A quick pointer for keeping those undersides clean, if you're not familiar with doing that or you traditionally work with foil um, or you normally pull it through. One thing you may not be able to see is I have a damp towel off to the side of my tray. So I'm always working with a damp towel and I'll use the back side of my brush as an eraser. So if I was to have gone in a little bit more heavy handed and the product ended up underneath, I'm gonna make sure I give it a really quick swipe while keeping my tension really straight. And in turn, it'll pick up any excess product you have and you can kind of just wipe it off. That way you're ensuring you get perfect results every application within your balayage. With the first piece, normally because of the ear, we're not gonna lay down cotton unless we've painted and it's laying against the face to protect the client's skin because it'll normally just fall out. So in this section, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna grab my first piece of perforated wrap and wrap it. And because it's perforated, it makes it a little bit easier for me to tear. Because I'm not using cotton, I'm actually gonna just mirror the section I'm doing. So I'm gonna take the point of that perforated wrap and I'm gonna just lightly wrap it around but touch it to where the product is moist. That way it actually stays in place. And that's that for that section. Now we'll go back in. And typically I like to load up my planchette prior to actually taking in the next section. That way you're totally ready to apply. Sticking with the zigzag, like I mentioned, and being mindful of where your previous zigzag was, I'd recommend going up about an inch to start the next zigzag. So I'm gonna go in with my comb about an inch higher than the last section I did, standing in front of my section, not overthinking it, and again, just providing a real quick zigzag, working towards the hairline. Now with this section, you'll notice it's actually provided almost three zigzags. So rather than the one point, I'll be painting the two. 
We'll go ahead and clip this hair out. The other thing that makes this super effective, and this is really great for curly hair as well, um, is the placement of the actual product. So we're not taking too many sections, but we're covering a lot of head space. And if you notice the way it falls, this is gonna be right in the peak of the next section we're taking. So it balances it out if the hair was to spread. Same thing, it balances everything out as we work our way up the head. So we always just wanna kind of just step back and take a look at what we're providing to make sure that we're getting pretty balanced results across the board. So in this section, I'll actually work with some cotton. Another good pointer is your ring finger and your pinky, you're typically not using for much. So you can always put your cotton there and hold your planchette at the same time. That way I'm not needing to step away, go to my tray or anything like that. And I'm able to just go right in and get into my next section once I've laid this one down. If you notice too, I'm kind of just pulling it nice and straight, making sure I've got a clean section to paint. And I'm gonna change my angle a little bit because it's best for you to work in front of your work, but because I want you to have a nice camera view, I'm a little bit off to the side. Um, so I'm gonna keep pinching in what we call zone two, that way I have that nice surface. But again, I'm gonna go in and just work it up towards the hairline. And if you notice, since I'm surface painting, I took the whole entire section. I'm not checking back into it or breaking up that zigzag. I'm painting the surface of every zigzag section I'm taking. So the underside will remain clean, but the surface will be painted and that's gonna provide a lot of dimension, but also it's gonna be much different than a highlight or a root shadow because it'll be a little bit more throughout and we're not creating as much depth within, so the color itself is going to be a lot lighter overall. Painting all the way down to the ends. And then at this point, just double checking my work. That looks pretty smooth. It looks softly feathered right at the root. That way I have that nice line, or no line, actually a seamless line of demarcation. And then this is why I'm going to pop in the cotton. The other thing I recommend is rather than popping in your cotton horizontally, pop it in vertically. And the reason for that's a little bit more important towards the back, but if it was horizontal and I went to check into my next section, odds are I can easily check into that and knock the cotton. So if you lay it vertically, it's gonna stay exactly where you want it and you don't have to fix anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up again. and wrap this section. When I start working up the head a little bit more, I use two pieces normally. That way it's easier for me to just kind of put it in place. I know it's long enough. I don't have to worry about grabbing a second one because again, we're only using this as our heat conductor and form of separation to keep our sections separated since we are painting the whole entire surface here. And again, this side should be done in about four sections. So that's going to be eight sections in the front. And depending on the client's headspace and how much hair they have, the sections in the back may vary. But normally you can do about four sections off to each side of the part. If they have a side part, sometimes it ends up being five and then three, but eight sections tends to be a pretty nice number for this technique. Um, so again, going up just barely an inch into my section. I'm going to loosely zigzag that again. And we end up with two more points to paint. And then this should be our final section. So I'm going to go ahead and clip that out of the way. And always play with your body positioning and the natural fall of the hair and take a look at kind of what you're covering when you're painting it. And if your body position changes, what surface does that provide you with since we're only painting the surface? 
If you notice standing directly in front of it, I could easily paint this surface and this client has some pre-existing balayage pieces and it would give me that nice dimension. But if she wants to be a little bit brighter around the front by actually shifting my body position a little bit more and straightening the hair out this way, I'm able to paint a little bit more off to the part, which is a little bit closer as we're approaching the front versus just the top. So I'm gonna actually hold it over directed here. That way I can paint a little bit more of that surface. And you can see how easy this product glides on. It's light blue in color, but it's really easy to see through. And again, you're getting nine levels of lift with the Blonde Studio Nine, and this contains Bonder Insight as well. So we're protecting the hair at the same time of lightening up to nine levels. The other thing that's nice about it is it's a 50 minute process time. So up to 50 minutes for your nine levels. Uh, but you will notice three levels of lift within your first 15 minutes. And it really does lift beautifully through pre-existing color or any hair that has been colored uh, prior to you, whether you're lifting through natural hair and previously colored hair, the results you get are pretty balanced throughout. So it takes a tone beautifully. Okay. So you can see that took quite a bit of product since that's a bigger section. Um, so if I was to pull it together, you would see we painted the full surface. The middle kind of fell out due to the sectioning. So I'm going to go ahead and place my cotton there and we'll wrap that section. And this is only our third section towards the front. So now we're getting up to the top. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box. Um, and I don't think I mentioned before, but my Instagram is Stephanie underscore cashmere, C-A-S-H-M-E-R-E underscore pro. So if anybody's interested in more education with L'Oreal Professional, has any questions past this class today, feel free to reach out to me. All right, so this is our final section off to the front. And again, you can see we're working off of that middle part. So here you have a few options. Depending on what the client's looking for, you can customize this front completely. One thing I like to do, especially for a client who may be a little bit younger or maybe somebody who does have gray coverage they're looking for and doesn't get the balayage every single time, but they come in every other time, maybe for a root retouch, this technique seems to be really effective because it gives them a little bit more time, but the hair looks a lot more natural throughout the term during their appointments. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to zigzag off the center part into the section we're working with. So what I'm going to do is actually go downwards with the zigzag. And this is, and again, you want to make sure you don't go too deep because we don't want to catch our next section. So because I'm doing a teeny one, let me recomb that to make sure I don't disrupt the section we did before. Let me lower this because you might be able to see a little more as I do this section. Um, so off the part, I'm going in and I'm just loosely zigzagging into it. And it may seem like it's kind of strange and it's not a lot of hair. But what's cool about it is you can see the section is so thin, you can almost see through it. So what's nice about it is this final section I'll be painting off to the side will be totally saturated, or not saturated, but surface painted. And then this, I'm not gonna do anything to. I'm gonna actually just leave it out. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna kind of open up and separate with all of those brighter pieces throughout. So it's gonna serve as a bit of dimension, but also maintain that natural root color or any kind of root color that we've put in for gray coverage. So we'll go ahead and section those small zigzags out. And again, just pulling back up my perforated wrap to make sure that stays protected. And let's turn the head again. 
So you can see now this is the section I'll be painting. And this will be our final section. So it's nice there. You can see this is a little bit wider. So we're going to get a little bit more brightness. But because these pieces are going to drop in, again, we'll get more of a natural effect. All right. And the key to surface painting really is making sure you've got really nice tension. So you always want to make sure that we've got a really clean surface to apply that product onto. And here, because I'm working more towards the hairline, I'm going to just make sure that my brush is wiped clean. So I'm going to wipe it onto the damp towel just to make sure I don't have any excess lightener off to the side of the brush because this is a much thinner section. So I need to make sure that the application is really even that I'm not pushing too much tension into the hair. So I'm basically just frosting this section, making sure that we're only surface painting it. And if you're not used to surface painting and balayaging, I know sometimes it can look a little scary or a little inconsistent, like your results are going to be really stripey or what you see is exactly what you're going to see once the hair is processed. That's really not the case because French balayage is such a soft application and only on the surface. Again, you get really natural, seamless results, very, very sun-kissed. Nothing like a highlight because it's not pinpointable. So it's very, very bespoke and customized. And that's exactly why I just mentioned with this last section off to the top, depending on what your client's looking for, you can work off the center part or you can zigzag and leave out the natural if they're looking for a little bit more of a root shadow or a natural effect. So now we're gonna go ahead and cover that section. just lay that flat and again I'm loosely just dropping it but what you'll notice is because I've wrapped it just like that it's going to make it really easy if we want to just rinse the front and keep the back processing afterwards so we've completed the front in only four sections I'm going to go ahead and drop down the part and we're going to leave that out and we'll switch over to the right side of the head and do the same technique. So for anybody who may have missed the beginning, we just did a tea parting and we're going to go ahead and zigzag into our first section. But prior to doing that, let me pre-pull my perforated wrap. It makes it so much easier when you have everything ready to go especially if you're not working with an assistant. So another one of those tips with the wet towel here is if you notice, I have my perforated wrap laying over the wet towel. So it's actually underneath the wet towel, if you were able to see it right now. So I have it laying on my tray, but I'm using the weight of the perforated wrap to actually weigh it down. The other bonus about that is because it's wet, it makes it a little bit easier for me to grab my perforated wrap pieces. So sometimes when you're wearing gloves, it makes it a little bit harder to work with them. If you have a damp towel, it makes it really easy if you are working by yourself. So just another pointer. All right, so we'll go ahead and again, loosely zigzag into the section. Oops. And this is off to my opposite side, so it feels a little uncomfortable for me. So I'm gonna actually switch my body position and my tray real quick for you guys. All right. So again, we're just going in and we're going to zigzag into this one. It's going to provide a triangle and this looks like a little wider. Perfect. That's what we want. Clipping up the hair we're not working with. And then making sure we have a really clean section.
And again, it's easiest when we're surface painting to stand directly in front of your work. So once you've pulled the tension, make sure that you're standing in front of it for the easiest application. It's always a little bit harder with camera view, um, but if anybody has any questions, please feel free to pop them in the box. So again, just painting the surface, but always starting about an inch down and feathering back up my lightener. That way I can get that really soft line of diffusion. The other thing I'm doing, if you haven't noticed with my application, is I'm applying in a downward motion and a 45 degree angle the whole entire time. And the reason for that is I don't wanna rough up the cuticle. So by applying the product down, I'm able to keep the tension and actually just paint the surface versus pushing too much product into the hair, which creates marbleization. So again, it's just those little things that make it a little bit easier with your application and make sure you're working with brushes that feel comfortable and actually pick up the product you're looking to use. Okay, I'm gonna actually switch back over. It's easier with the camera angle to stay on this side. So we'll go ahead and wrap that section, leaving the cotton out because again, with the ear there, it typically tends to fall, but I am going to use a triangle of the perforated wrap because that mirrors the actual section I took and I'm gonna just loosely apply it over the top. If you feel like the foil is gonna slip on the first one, just lightly tap it because again, we're just using it for a heat conductor. So we wanna make sure that it's there protecting the surface from the next section that we're gonna be taking. Going back into this, this would be our second section. Again, I'm going to loosely zigzag, but be mindful of where your last section was. All right. And you can see that provides us with our two peaks again versus the one. Really, really easy to follow the next time you see the client as well. And there's a few different ways you can actually get really creative with this. You could also work with a demi-permanent hair color and provide a little bit more of a low light at the same time of highlighting if that's what you were looking for. But because we're surface painting, we're gonna again, stick with painting the whole entire surface. Making sure my section's nice and smooth. And this is again where we're working a little bit closer to the hairline. So I am kind of changing my angle a little bit there, just bending it a tad bit. That way I can get a little bit closer to right there by the hairline and provide that brightness. And then I'll smooth it out again and continue painting that surface. And there's a lot of different ways to get really similar results. Um, a lot of people like to do like a teasy light to create a smooth line of diffusion that kind of breaks it up. But when you actually do well thought out placement and kind of overall play with the lightning techniques that you're using, you can actually lay down your product and get really seamless, natural looking results. If you're working with the right products and you feel comfortable actually laying it down. So in this case, again, we're using the Blonde Studio 9 with Bondra inside, which is going to provide nine levels of lift, and it's going to keep the hair extremely strong the whole time we're working. The other thing that's really nice about it is if your client has any formation to their hair, so if they have any curls, a lot of times when clients are going lighter with curly hair, they don't want to jeopardize the formation of their curl while actually lightening. So this lightener is really great for anybody who wants maximum lift, anybody who has like a level five or darker, so they really do need that maximum lift, or also anybody who has formation to their hair and doesn't want to jeopardize losing their curl for lighter color results. So now they're able to get the best of both worlds and also keep the bond even tighter while we're lightening. So this is super exciting, super innovative. So here we'll go into our third section. 
Again, we've only got four sections on the top, so just loosely zigzagging into it. And again, it provides us with those double peaks, so we'll go ahead and paint that. And again, I'm painting the whole section. So if you wanted to leave more dimension in this, you could easily just go in and pick up your peaks, kind of similar to this, and then you would just paint the surface of that. So if you were looking to leave more negative space, you could section into your section if that was something you were looking for. And again, you would just have your brighter pieces here popping out versus the whole section that we're getting ready to paint. So another way to kind of just manipulate the color placement, but to look at the section you're painting and think about the results you're going to get. And you can see how easy this product glides on. I don't have to work it down the hair too much. It really does kind of just adhere to the hair. It's a beautiful consistency, so it makes it really easy for me like I mentioned, to feather up towards the root and provide just a softer, seamless result, but also apply it a little bit heavier towards mid lengths and ends to get brighter results all at the same time while balayaging. And here you can see I need a little more product since she's got a little more hair up to the top section. But the one thing I find really handy about working with the planchette is you notice it's a lot cleaner when I'm working. So I never end up leaving the planchette from my hand. If you're comfortable painting off the board, that's fine too. But again, um, this just makes it a little bit easier when you are just painting the surface. And this is a really great way to just add on a lightening surface to any color application you have. Um, because of the fact that you're able to just pop in a few pieces, but you can easily charge like a partial highlight price if you're only doing a few pieces, you get bold results, but it doesn't take a lot of time. And what's nice about the Blonde Studio portfolio within L'Oreal Professional is it works really well if you're coloring and lightening at the same time. So I know a lot of stylists or colorists have questions um, if you can do it at the same time, or they're always surprised when I will do a color and lightning service at the same time. But mixing technologies, and we're not really mixing them, we just bring it up to those points, ends up working out really well. Um, I've never had a problem applying lightener over our permanent color or our demi-permanent color if I was just popping in a few pieces for dimension or whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and again, just pop this in vertically. And then drop our perforated wrap, just lightly touching it to the top. That way we can get those nine levels of lift that we're looking for. And now we're back to our top section again. So super, super fast. The whole front has only been eight sections off to the part. But again, because I want more of a natural effect, we're gonna go ahead and zigzag back in to that sectioning off the part on this side, because you can see how heavy it is if I was to just paint off the part. I want to create just a little bit more of a natural finish. So we're going to break that up by leaving that natural hair out at the top. So again, just looking at where those points are so that you don't section into them with your next section. And I'm going to go ahead and just zigzag this. And anytime we're balayaging, especially with L'Oreal Professional, we talk about peaks and valleys and double points, triple points, single points. It ends up being actually as simple as a zigzag with anything. So don't overcomplicate um, sectioning. If it's easier for you to do a zigzag, that makes it really simple for you to create that depth you're looking for. And again, what we're really looking for with surface painting is padding. So the reason I'm working off of a zigzag is because you can see I have all of this padding here. So when I'm actually painting the surface of this hair and I have a real smooth surface here to paint, 
you don't realize the depth or the quote unquote padding I have below that's providing me that smooth surface. So that's the reason I'm working off of a zigzag versus a horizontal section. So again, we're gonna go ahead and just paint this whole surface. And this will be our final section off to the top of the head and then we'll get into the back. And again, start a little lower. I always like to start about an inch down from the hairline and then go back and softly feather my color into the hairline. That way you're not putting too much product on that natural regrowth and getting a really bright lightening result right at the root, especially if you're lightening through pre-colored hair. We wanna make sure that we're not oversaturating the root area. That way you don't have to overtone at the end or not even overtone, but a lot of times people have to do multiple toner formulations because they lift it in such uneven areas. So if you pay attention to that and you're looking for a more natural finish, apply a little less lightener. Or another tip you can do, some people like to go in with a dry brush and kind of just bump it off. If you weren't working with perforated wrap, that's something that I would like to do or I typically would do if I wasn't wrapping it. So if that was something we were gonna do and we were gonna let this air process, that's another reason why I'd keep a dry brush. So I would go in and I would kind of just dry brush the hair to soften that line if that's something you're looking for. And it'll do the same thing. And that works really well in situations where you are air processing and not actually covering the hair with perforated wrap. Um, so in our case with L'Oreal Professional, that would be like with the clay seven because it's ammonia free and it's a clay. I like to kind of diffuse the line like that. But since this one's going to be wrapped up, we're going to make sure there's a little bit more product so it does lift. All right. And then that is our final section for the front. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that last piece of cotton. And we'll go ahead and wrap it. Simplicity is definitely key. So again, the cotton is really just used for a little bit of padding. The perforated wrap is really just used as our heat conductor. And it doesn't take too much effort when laying down either or. It should just be really simple and moving on. The reason we did the placement again like we just did is because it's super fast and effective. It covered the majority of the front in only eight sections. And now we have the back of the head to work with. So this is where I mentioned, um, typically I would end up remixing because Blonde Studio likes to be worked with in small batches. So I'm gonna go ahead and remix now due to the fact that I'm actually almost out of lightener here. And I wanna make sure that it's just as effective in the back so I can rinse at the same time. If you were looking for a lighter result, maybe you switch to a 20 volume now in the back. That way you have that sun kiss diffusion working towards the back. Kind of think of it like that so you can utilize your developers and your timing at the same time to get really great results. So here we are complete with the front. We will begin with the back. And I'm sure you already know where I'm going with it. But we're going to continue with the zigzag sectioning because, again, it makes it super, super simple. One more scoop. And I'm mixing one to one and a half mixing ratio. So I'm mixing one scoop of our Blonde Studio Lightener to one and a half parts of our Blonde Studio 9 30 volume developer. And again, it's nine levels of lift, super gentle on the hair, and it contains oil as well as a bonder inside. So because it has oil, it's actually really helping to hydrate at the same time as lifting. And we're also getting maximum lift. So nine levels of lift is pretty rapid, super innovative, especially to have a bonder built in and not have to 
add anything additional or do anything additional. And it also doesn't slow down your lightning time. So that's another really great bonus of having an added bonder. The other thing with it too is being a sweet renter and being in business for yourself. Um, I know it's really important when it comes to cost of products and things. So with a bonder built in, you can still charge for using a bonder in your product. You're just using a more innovative product that has it already built in. So you may not need to buy an additional additive if you're happy using Blonde Studio 9 and you choose to use a bonder inside at the same time of lightning, which I think, why not? I mean, if we can protect the hair a little bit more, also charge a little bit more for it, why wouldn't we? It's gonna make our work look better. So again, depending on how much hair you have, sometimes with the zigzags, it's easier to break this into two sections um, because it does end up being a lot of hair in your hand as you're trying to section. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that now. That way it's a little bit easier to see on camera as well. I'm gonna just break it into two. But then paying attention to her nape and where the hair is at, again, I'm going to go up my first peak about a half inch. So I'm going to just loosely zigzag into this hair once again. I believe this will provide two peaks to paint on the bottom. And those would be the two pieces we start with. So we'll go ahead and clip this off. And again, any of the first sections are a little bit harder to lay down cotton. So because we're only surface painting, I'm not worried about the light on the client's neck. But the one thing I will say is have the client bend their neck. So depending on how far along you are in your hair journey, um, I'm going on 18 years and I'm five, nine and a half. So anybody who's tall feels my pain. Anybody who's short feels my pain. Any hairdresser who's been in the business and the game this long feels my pain. The more we can have the clients work with us with their head positioning, the better it's gonna be for you and the more precise you'll be with their application. So if you need them to bend down, feel free to kind of tap them and have them bend their neck down if it makes it easier for you to apply. So again, pulling really clean tension, I'm gonna go ahead and just paint the surface of these two points. And I'm just feathering back up to the root. The majority of the hair should look pretty coated. You can see you can't really see the hair through my lightener. The only places where it is a little more transparent, again, is where I've diffused the lines a little bit more at the regrowth area. And again, that's because I want a softer lift and a seamless line a little bit more diffused, like the sun did it, versus an actual solid highlight. And again, that center kind of falls out because of the sectioning, but that's perfect because that's how it provides us the dimension we want. So that'll be our first section. It just ends up being two peaks. Again, I'm not going to lay down the cotton because it'll fall at the nape. And after that section, typically you can have the client lean back up. And again, a lot of people don't always work with perforated wrap. Um, the reason I chose it today is because Blonde Studio 9 can swell a little bit. It is an ammoniated product. But again, it's our heat conductor. So when I'm looking for maximum lift, I'm always going to do my first balayage, whether it's French balayage or a saturated application with the perforated wrap. That way I get maximum lift and then I can build into it in the future appointments. That's also why L'Oreal Professional has such a wide range of lighteners. We have about six different lighteners within Blonde Studio, and they range from five levels of lift all the way up to nine levels of lift. So what's nice is when I need maximum lift, I'll go in with the powerhouse, which is Blonde Studio 9, but then sometimes I'm just looking to reconnect those points. And so I'll go in with Clay 7 or something that doesn't lift quite as much. And then at that point, I don't have to use the perforated wrap in the cotton because it's a different product that actually works a little bit different. So it saves me time, but I'm still able to charge the same amount of money. And the client is satisfied and the hair is healthy. So going into our second section for the back, again, just loosely 
zigzagging and I'm gonna actually section directly in front of it because it is a little wider and I don't wanna turn my back to you guys, but I wanna give you a clean section. Um, again, it's best to be working in front of your work, especially with your sectioning, that way you can create balance. Okay. And I'm gonna actually drop down a little bit more of my top section um, because with the zigzag I'm trying, I need to get a higher point there. So at this point, I'll actually just zigzag into any, everything. And the reason for that I'll show you right now is you can see how high that point went. So now with this hair remaining, it makes it a little bit easier to just go directly in and zigzag after the first one at the nape due to the positioning of the head. So just make sure it's combed out neatly. That way you can get a really clean part and then loosely just zigzag into it. There we go. So you can see this, I believe provided me with almost four points. We've got one off to this side. So there's one, two, three, and four, but we're gonna surface paint this whole thing. And again, at this point, because the head space is a little bit wider, if it's easier for you to even break up your application into two sections, you can do that as well. So if you wanted to take this as one section, split the head and take this as one section, that way it's a little bit more manageable, you can absolutely do that. So let's go ahead. I'm going to do that because I think with the camera angle, it makes it a little easier as well. I'm also gonna switch over to my large brush. So now I'll use the large brush since I'm working with a bigger section. And while we're at it, I should probably just load up a little bit more product just to make sure I'm not reaching over to get more knowing I'm gonna be applying quite a bit in the back. So I'm just going a little bit heavier than I did in the front, you can see. I'm layering just a little more product to make sure I don't have to keep reaching for it. All right, and smoothing out this section, getting a real clean surface to paint on. And I begin on this piece. And in the back, I'm not too worried about taking it up too high. Um, I'll detail it a little bit more when we get to the crown of the head, but since this is gonna be the interior of the hair and I'm really just creating some lighter pieces, I'm doing the same thing where I'm just diffusing that line and working it up to those peaks, but I'm not quite going as high as I did in the front, as you can see. So I'm kind of dragging down that line of diffusion, providing a little bit more natural regrowth to provide more of a natural result, but also to create more brightness towards the front. So again, with all brightness comes darkness. And in order to sometimes see our brighter pieces look bright, we wanna make sure we have enough dimension or darkness throughout. Okay, and I'm gonna just put a piece of cotton there in that one just for padding and then I'll take this as my second section now. And again, anybody who missed the beginning, cotton between your pinky and ring finger, a great place to hold it so that you're not always reaching off to your cart because as we know, balayage is a little bit different when we're surface painting versus applying color with a brush and bowl and actually saturating that hair. So again, I'm holding my brush at a 45 degree angle, picking up the product and then just laying it down and really, really just evenly guiding it down the actual hair. And I'm always working in a downward motion. So you'll notice for the cleanest results and to maintain the integrity of the hair, we don't wanna rough up the cuticle. I see a lot of colorists go up and down and you'll notice it almost gives you a teasy light effect because it, it separates the hair. But at the same time, you're roughing up the cuticle and your results are a little bit more uncontrollable when you're creating that texture or 
separation with its easy light. So if you surface paint like this, you can also mix techniques, but just know that this is gonna give you a really seamless overall look. So even though I did them in two sections, I'm still gonna just wrap it in one piece of perforated wrap. That's more than enough for the back. Um, a tip that's nice sometimes, and you can see how quick this is lifting. I don't know if it's picking up on the camera, but again, three levels of lift in the first 15 minutes, a total of nine levels in 50 minutes. When I have a section like this, it's effective to just kind of break your perforated wrap to mirror whatever your sectioning is like. So if you have lightener up in these higher points and you want to make sure that you're able to put your perforated wrap there, mirror the section and actually break your perforated wrap if you need to by just ripping it to create a V so you can lay it down. That's just another way you can ensure that you're able to cover the sections and conduct that heat. If the hair is starting to fan out in a different way, you can mirror the natural fall. Okay, so that's two sections in the back. I think we'll have about two or three more. And that'll be a full head of French balayage in very little time. So I'm going to go ahead and zigzag back into this. And again, an easy way to think about where to start your zigzag is to look and see where is your highest point from the side of the hair when you see where the highest point is. So my highest point is here. I'm going to actually start to zigzag into here. So I know that I'm doing it high enough and I'm not going into my pre-existing section because again, if you do that, you're gonna end up pulling the pieces you did out of the perforated wrap and there's no way to fix it once you've done that. So make sure you're really aware of the section you're working with and you don't disrupt the one that you previously did. So that's also sometimes where you're either gonna go up with your zigzag or you're gonna go down with your zigzag. So sometimes you may have upside down peaks or actual triangles depending on the headspace. And there's no right or wrong. It's gonna just break it up accordingly. So here I'm gonna go, I believe, up in this section and I'm just gonna comb it out a little bit more. And again, we prepped the hair with Metal Detox so you can see how easy it is to comb through it. The other thing that's really nice about Metal Detox is let's say you forgot to do it in the beginning and you wanted to add it into your service. You can always do it section by section. For me, I prefer to do the whole head because I get into conversation and really into my work and I wanna make sure that I didn't skip any of the hair. So I always make sure it's the first step of every color service I provide. And again, it's compatible with all color brands. But if you're somebody who likes to work section by section, it actually makes it a little bit easier to work with the perforated wrap because it helps to cut down on the static in the hair, as well as it gives you a little bit more of a grip because it does have a little bit of moistness to it. So if that was something you wanted to do, you can always just kind of lightly mist it through the hair prior to taking your section. And again, it only feels like a light texture spray. It's a very light mist, so it should dry pretty instantly. Typically, if you do the full application, by the time you've gone to mix your color, it's completely dried into the hair. But if you're doing it section by section, you can see it just made this a little bit more controllable for me now. So I'm able to go back in and section this section without static. And I can go ahead and do my next balayage section. So whatever works best for you. And this is gonna provide us with about the four peaks. So again, I'm gonna break this into two sections because the headspace is a little bit wider to make sure it's more controllable and I can precisely paint that surface and then we'll come over to the other side. And if anybody has any questions, again, please feel free to put them in the chat box. Loading up my plan chat and grabbing my cotton. And I'm gonna actually, now that we only have about two more sections, I'm gonna switch brushes because you can see my sections aren't as deep. So because I'm not taking as thick of a section in every triangle peak, I wanna make sure that again, I'm not pushing too much product into the hair. So I'm gonna switch back over to my smaller brush, wiping it clean on my towel, because now I'm actually working up towards the hairline again. And again, that is why I'd always keep out multiple brushes, just to make sure 
that you are able to work really, really clean and just apply the product where you need it. And again, if you ever like just touch a little piece where you don't want it with your brush, like I just barely did, but again, that's why I off, make sure you clean it up at the time of that little mistake. So a lot of times I'll see stylists get water or a damp towel and try and wipe it dry. Again, if the lightener's already dried into the hair, the water is activating it again. So the best way to clean up a little lightener boo-boo that you don't want on the hair is just to kind of wipe it dry out of the hair. Do it at the time. Don't get it wetter. Just wipe it out dry. Just diffusing that line. And I'm always paying attention to what I'm applying. If I don't like how it looks at the time I'm applying it, then I'm gonna go back and fix it. So if it doesn't look even, like for instance, that doesn't look even right there. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna actually apply in the moment because once it's wrapped up, again, there's no fixing it. And if I see something like that at the time of surface painting, it's gonna end up looking like a marbleized area or a section that I missed once the hair is complete. So make sure whatever you're seeing, you're happy with before you move on to the next section. All right. And so again, this is just our third section on the back of the head. We've got two more points here. And with this section, I'm gonna go ahead and just paint the whole thing again. All right, and this is really great, again, for all hair textures. This works really beautiful on curly hair. It works really great on all colors of hair, so dark hair, blonde hair, brown hair, depending on what you're looking for, again, because this is going to overall lighten the appearance of the overall hair color, but in a really soft and sun-kissed, naturally diffused way. So all blonding services done with L'Oreal Professional, we typically finish with a Dialyte gloss. So that would be something off camera that I would be finishing this mannequin with. And I think um, the reason this works so great on a variety of skin colors, hair colors, and different things, just this overall application, is because of the fact that it's just kind of giving you, like I mentioned, an overall lighter shade, which looks really, really natural. So you can go ahead and deposit whatever tone you want in, and it's not too dramatic or pinpointable like a highlight would be. It looks super, super natural, and you can play with the tone. So something like this, we might want to use like a little bit more of a golden tone or something warm because I'm going for more of a sun-kissed look, and that's definitely the trend. I think we're moving away from such cool icy results that's been the trend for quite some time uh, but I think moving into the new season even though it is spring we're moving into summer we're going to be seeing a lot more warm results a lot more gold tones so this works out really well because it just provides that beautiful dimension through it and when we're not looking for anything to be too too icy we're able to deposit whatever compatible tone we're looking for with the proper amount of lift So with this mannequin, since I'm lifting nine levels, I would probably use a DLA 10.23, which is a level 10, and it's a violet gold. So it gives me that small amount of violet to neutralize whatever underlying warmth I have, but then it gives me just that tad bit of gold reflect to really give a beautiful sun-kissed look to the actual hair. So we are off to our final section possibly you can see we're at the very top of the head we've done three sections so depending on what we're looking for this can be the final or we can kind of adjust the service depending on what we want the finish to look like so again because we're having it a little bit brighter cascading into the back a little bit more sun-kissed um, I'll probably finish with this last section, but I'm going to mirror what we did to the front. So since the front, if you remember, we took the really fine zigzag. It ended up almost being seven pieces after each part, if we were counting the peaks. 
I'm going to do the same thing across the back. And the reason for that is I'm going to leave that small amount of regrowth or natural hair depending on what we were doing if we applied a base color to cover the regrowth with the balayage at the same time or if we're working with just the natural canvas that the client has so i'm going to leave it out that way we do get that natural result so super super simple again holding the hair in my hand so i don't disrupt the previous section making sure it's combed out nicely i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to kind of create a different zigzag. So depending on the client's head, you may want to break this again into two prior to zigzagging because we're going to start a little bit lower off to the side. So just to get balance and to make sure we don't have too much natural hair left out, all I've done is broken the back into two, you can see. And I'm going to zigzag and let me put this head down a little lower so you can see. I'm gonna actually, you can see I'm gonna zigzag starting from right there. So the head is just broken into two when working with the section that I have. But because I'm gonna be leaving that natural hair out, I wanna just zigzag into it and make sure that I have just enough to leave out. So again, off to the one side, one, two, three, four, it ends up being about four peaks I'm gonna leave out of the top. And if you see, this whole section we're gonna paint, this is gonna be the small amount that's kind of just haloed over the top, breaking up all of that beautiful brightness, but also allowing that natural color to shine through so the client isn't having to come in all of that often. And with that being said, that's where you wanna make sure if you are balayaging, especially a French balayage service, you're charging a little bit more money because you're not gonna be seeing your clients as regularly. So because of that, we wanna make sure that when we do see them, they understand that it is a natural service. We don't need to see them as regular as four to six weeks, but make sure that we're making the most of our time as well as theirs. And because they're not having the CSS frequently, we should actually be charging a little bit more money because it is such a customized bespoke service. So the client totally benefits from it. But again, balayage can't be duplicated. It's going to be different for every client you do. What I'm showing you is just a really great go-to technique again um, that you can maybe incorporate into what you're already doing or just try this on a new client. So again, just surface painting this section. And because we're working up towards the top and I don't want it to look like a highlight, I'm going to continue with that drag down diffused application into my points. So I'm not going to saturate too much into those points, knowing that we're going to drop down this natural section and it's going to cascade in. I don't want to have them looking like actual highlights. I want it to look really, really natural. And even though the top of the head tends to be in around the hairline, a little bit brighter due to the sun, even though we're leaving that natural hair out, we lose a little bit of density within those ends. So if you notice, before I actually cover this one, if we were to drop the top section down, and again, the haircut's gonna change everything, you can see, just this head, that it's such a sheer amount, it's almost translucent, so you can see through it because I have just a little bit within that section, but it also isn't even as thick towards the end. So all of that brightness that we've provided is gonna actually come through with the longer lengths of the hair. So those are things I'm looking at as well to make sure I can get away with leaving out certain sections and getting a natural effect intentionally. So that piece is done. I'm not gonna wrap it yet, but we'll go ahead and zigzag into the next section off to the side. So following the same thing we did, This ends up being four peaks. Same exact thing. It's about four peaks here that we're going to paint into. And I'm gonna softly diffuse those lines. And you can see I'm at the high nape of the head. We're getting the brightness there, but we're gonna have enough hair to fall over it so it looks really natural again. And then I'm gonna gloss overall the whole head with a 
knowing that the front sat a little bit longer and it's going to be a little bit brighter. But again, if you're a little slower with your application, you can always rinse the front and keep the back processing until desired time by wrapping it like this. So this is our final section. Just diffusing it into those points. And another way um, to softly diffuse too is like if you notice when I work my way back up to those points, it's normally after I worked my product back down the rest of the hair because at that point I have way less on my brush and I don't have as much to move up towards the root area. So just make sure you're not going in too heavy handed right at the beginning of the regrowth area. That way we get really balanced lightning results throughout. Okay. And we'll drop that section. This is why I like to keep the cotton between my pinky because again, you don't have to go and grab it again. I'm gonna go ahead and just drop it vertically. Adjust her head one more time. And that's our final section. So we have four sections in a zigzag section in the back and that will complete the back. So we'll go ahead and wrap that as well. And again, if you are doing the front and the back separately, make sure that when you do put your last pieces of perforated wrap, you'll notice that I'm almost closing them in on each section. So I'm never pushing, I'm never squishing the lightener in with the actual hair. But because it is a heat conductor, I'm never leaving my ends completely open like that and loose for two reasons, because I don't want the product to swell, but I also want to make sure that I'm trapping the heat in there and I'm able to get the nine levels of lift or whatever it is that I'm looking for. So in this case, now I would just position her natural hair back in a natural fall. Again, you can see it's so few pieces that we left out and the majority of her head has been balayage. So we're gonna get a really, really bold effect while looking out for the integrity of the hair in a total of 12 sections. So that was super, super simple, whether it is a middle part or an off center part, we did four zigzag sections off to the side, working our way up to two zigzags off the part, leaving the natural hair out. That way we have that really beautiful sun-kissed finish. Again, if you were looking for a root shadow, this could also be where you go in with your demi-permanent hair color and you maybe paint in that root shadow because it'll give you a little bit more depth there and this hair isn't covered. So you have that option at that point. So we have the four zigzag sections off to each side of the part. And then we completed it with the same thing, four sections in the back leaving out that small amount of hair for a very natural and bold look in a small amount of time. So you can see this whole class was about an hour and 18 minutes and that was with me talking and working super, super slow. Um, but again, this is a French balayage service that you should be able to add on to any service or provide in under an hour for any client. And again, at the same time of that, I've added on a metal detox treatment. So that's a great way to make more money behind the chair since it is an add-on service guaranteeing 87% less breakage, true to tone color results every single time. There's no reason why clients shouldn't be using it. So if you haven't heard of it, check it out. But again, I've added on that service. I've provided a full French balayage utilizing a Blonde Studio 9, which actually has a built-in bonder. So that's not requiring any additional time. And it's also oil-based. So the hair is gonna be extremely hydrated. So you can see time is money. And also the integrity of the hair is super, super, super important. So when it comes to choosing products, I would much rather work with a product that's gonna make sure I have really clean results and I'm not risking any breakage or anything unplanned. And with L'Oreal Professional, I really feel like the Blonde Studio portfolio provides me with all of those things, but also it's really, really easy to make more money behind the chair by utilizing the innovations that we've already came up for you. 
So again, thank you guys so much for having me today. You can stay tuned for the results. So if you see this video later, you can check out my Instagram again at Stephanie, spelled out with the P-H, Stephanie underscore Cashmere, spelled out C-A-S-H-M-E-R-E underscore pro. And I'm the regional educator for L'Oreal Professional here in Los Angeles. So if there's any other questions or things I can help you with, please feel free to reach out. And again, thank you for spending your Monday with me. I hope everybody has an awesome week. I can't wait to see you guys again, Salon Republic. Have a great week.